Hi, my name is John Kenny, and I am the author of Love Poems for Married People, Love Poems for People with Children, and Love Poems for Anxious People, as well as the novels Truth in Advertising and Talk to Me, every one of which has won the Nobel Prize for Literature. I have a new collection out this fall, Love Poems for the Office. I thought I might read a few poems. Is a sentence no one wants to hear, ever. Before I do, though, I thought I might address the photo you're looking at. That's not technically me. Uh, we had some difficulties earlier, uh, remote videoing, and so the marketing team, uh, to their great credit, uh, scrambled to find um, a likeness of me. Uh, they typed in my name and personality traits, uh, middle-aged, confused, underwear, writer, neutered, slippers, and this was the photo that was a 100% match. So a quick thank you uh, for listening uh, and for committing to buying 100 books uh, when, they, when they do come out. Um, that's much appreciated. It's a great cause, uh, the cause being uh, uh, me, I guess. So here we go. Love Poems for the Office by the man in the long underwear, John Kenny. The dedication to the book reads, To my boss, also I quit. There's an epigraph, uh, and it comes from Bertrand Russell, uh, the famous English uh, soccer hooligan, uh, I believe. Um, I could be wrong on that. I, I'd never heard of him. Um, a word of advice to aspiring writers, always use an epigraph uh, from a long dead uh, English or French person as it makes you seem uh, smart. Russell said, quote, one of the symptoms of an approaching nervous breakdown is the belief that one's work is terribly important. So I thought I might read from the question and answer section that opens the book. Uh, and then I thought I might read uh, 40 or 50 poems. Uh, so if, if you do have to use the bathroom, uh, now would be a good time to do it. And I will, uh, I will wait. So this is a Q&A with the author. Question. Your last collection, Love Poems for Anxious People, came out at almost the exact same time the coronavirus hit the United States. Now you have Love Poems for the Office, and many offices are either closed or at least radically changed. Should you stop writing books? Answer. That's a great question, and you're not the first person to suggest that my publisher, friends, readers, my parents. Question. What will your next untimely book title be? Answer. Love Poems for the Apocalypse. Question. What you've done in this book is take the mundane world of the office and turn that world into mundane poems. Answer. I think that's exactly right. Question. You've been called the greatest poet of your generation. What does that feel like? Answer. I have. I hadn't heard that. Question. Wait, sorry. That was Mary Oliver who was called the greatest poet of her generation. No one has called you anything except for some very bad names on Goodreads. Would you like to hear some of them? Answer. I'll pass. This poem is called What I Would Do Differently If You Weren't My Boss. I wouldn't laugh the next time you tell that joke about the two nuns because it's not funny or even physically possible. I would just stare at you as if to say, you're a dickhead. And then I might say out loud, you're a dickhead. And when you came by my cubicle, to ask if I had gotten to that report, even though you could see that I was eating an egg salad sandwich, only to say, I guess it will have to wait until after your lunch, and make a face and say how much you hate egg salad, I might say something like, that's funny because I hate your face. I would say that if you weren't my boss and I didn't have a mortgage. 
and then I might add that your kids are weird looking. Because they are. This poem is called Hold the Elevator. If I am honest, I did see you holding those two coffees, a file wedged under one arm. Jill, right? So let me explain what happened there, Jill. I was kind of in a rush to get back to my desk, I mean. Not to a meeting or anything. Just to eat my lunch and simply space out and watch YouTube. So I had been standing in that elevator a good seven seconds, which can feel like a long time in an elevator, and I'd pressed the closed door button a few times, maybe ten, when I saw you shuffling toward the elevator, smiling, eyes wide, as if to say, hold that door. Please don't take this as a criticism, but you are a slow walker, Jill. Also, the doors had started to close in large part because I was pressing the closed door button but making it look like I was pressing the open door button while making a face like, how do these crazy buttons work? This is so complicated. The point is, get the next elevator, Jill. This poem is called A Review of the Office Holiday Party from the Police Report. The food ran out. That was the problem. The booze didn't, though. That was also part of the problem. Kissing people was another part of the problem. In all, there were lots of parts to the overall problem. Another significant problem was that I was dancing, alone, according to eyewitnesses, and spinning, and singing a song I had made up. Take your pants off. Come on, everybody, take your pants off. And then, according to depositions, I performed a spinning move of such force that I somehow flung myself off the dance floor and into a table of several women from accounting who were chatting with the CFO, breaking the table, and then throwing up on myself and the CFO. I think that was the main problem. Still, prior to that, it was one of the better holiday parties. (laughs) 